With a billion dreams riding on its back, Chandrayaan-3 is inching closer and closer to the moon. Just a few days from now, the Indian Space Research Organization will make a second attempt at attempting a soft landing on the moon. Now, this momentous occasion comes exactly four years since last ISRO last went to the moon, but could not achieve a successful touchdown when the lander crash landed. Today, we have with us Professor Anupurni Subramaniam. She is the director of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bengaluru. An esteemed astronomer, she has led years of research into star clusters, galaxies, and stellar evolution. Thank you so much for joining us, ma'am. Thank you for having me on the show. Yes. To begin with, I would like to ask you that a successful touchdown on the moon will definitely guarantee India a spot into the elite club of sp space daring nations, the US, Russia, and China. But as an astronomer, what is the scientific importance of this mission? Yeah, so you would know that we are going back to the moon after so many years, like 50 years, more than 50 years. Now, the renowned interest in the recent years is mainly due to the uh, 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 discovery of hydroxyl or water molecules on the moon. But that is the uh, one of the aims, uh, one of the discoveries only. But recent discoveries have told us that <clears throat> There are minerals out there and uh, which could also be used. So uh, it's very important for us to know what is out there. And from an astronomer, uh, uh, we always have been trying to understand the formation and evolution of the solar system and how the sun is formed, how the I mean how the planets are formed, and how the solar system is the way it is right now. And you can see that the planets, though there are many planets, there are there are they are kind of different, right? The inner planets are rocky, the outer planets are gaseous, and some planets have moons, some planets do not have moons, and what is actually the guiding everything in the formation and their evolution. And all the more so we need to know now because we know that several stars out there have similar solar system. If we want to know more about what is out there. Definitely. So a successful touchdown, it's basically a, a technology demonstration. So how will that help us in uh, basically advancing our interstellar research and space exploration? Yeah, so uh, even to study our solar system, so far what we have been doing is by collecting the, uh, uh, getting the data from various missions. Let us pictures and uh, how you collect the electromagnetic spectrum. You could take it as pictures, you could type, take it as spectroscopy, like, you know, different uh, uh, wavelength or polarization, things like that. So it's basically like, you know, passive collecting data. You're not collected data actively by going there, collecting and bringing it and analyzing on the, uh, 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 in the laboratory. So that is something physics, normally physics do, like, you know, you have to chop it, do something and figuring out what exactly the uh, content is. So, uh, so far, the interstellar molecular research or, you know, the planetary research all have been depending on this. But now we are seeing a kind of paradigm shift by getting astro the mining on the asteroids. Hayabusa missions have brought back material and that material we are trying to analyze. So when the objects out there in the solar system are formed, they're formed differently. So some of the elemental uh, 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 abundances of the content varies from the center to the surface in each object. And what is out in the peripheral part of in Earth is not the same as in the other objects as such. So we need to understand that unless and until you sample it, it is difficult. So far, we have been taking pictures out there to which are actually probes, mapping various elements depending upon their property. Right. So uh, with this mission, uh, it's India's third mission to the moon. Uh, we attempted the, our first mission in 2008, which made the discovery of water molecules. And then we went in 2019 to attempt a soft landing. And now we are returning there for the third time. Now with this, we are the, the, it puts the focus back on interstellar research, on space exploration. Countries across the world have restarted their lunar programs. The US has announced the Artemis program. Russia is planning to set up a lunar base. Where does India stand in terms of space exploration so far? So I think it's a very well known fact that the Indian Space Research Organization has uh, established itself in extremely well with its capacity. And uh, with this moon mission, with particularly the soft landing, will 
uh, multifold its uh, you know uh, its skill capability uh, the important thing is uh, uh, we should also know that every nation has its own way of reaching to the moon so it's uh, it's it's not a uni unified way india does it in a very very different way very economical way but it's it's one of the ways right and uh, though it takes more time there's no race on uh, finding out who is reaching the moon first but how you're going to move how do you, how are you going to reach there and reach there perfectly that's what matters and that's what india has been doing and this is the third time we are uh, doing the same process and we have mastered it and uh, the landing uh, on the moon first happened in the as part of chandrayaan 1 itself because of this moon impact probe which actually landed on the moon and the south pole and gave us one of the uh, uh, you know clues for the hydroxyl molecules present there in the moon and second one of course it crash landed but the chandrayaan 2 orbiter has been mapping the surface of the moon at extremely high resolution so the huge amount of data is available from chandrayaan 2 and chandrayaan 2 orbiter will also play a major role for communicating to the lander of chandrayaan 3 right uh, some of the images captured by the chandrayaan 2 orbiter also helped a isro in really determining the landing site for the third mission now exactly. uh, right so uh ma'am uh, in terms of the space exploration uh, uh we have gone to mars we are now going to the moon uh in uh, isro has lined up several other missions in the coming uh, time as well uh, we also like to tell our viewers that isro has planned a mission to the sun as well aditya l1 and it's important to know that the uh, an important payload for this mission was uh, developed by scientists from the indian Institute of Astrophysics, uh, ma'am, could you tell us a little more about it? Because you are also gearing up for the launch of Aditya L one in in near future. Yeah, so it's a very happy moment for astronomers because uh, the uh, Indian space missions are now looking at the moon and soon. So AstroSat mission by ISRO actually has demonstrated that we have been we can operate very complex missions in space. Now Aditya L one is a much more complex mission because it's going to travel towards the sun. that's the l1 lagrange point is 1.5 million kilometers from earth uh, uh, towards the sun and it will have an halo orbit in a plane perpendicular to the line connecting the sun and the uh, uh, earth and now reaching there is the first time again for us and once you reach there you are actually kind of uh, 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 moving around a null point now this is going to give us much more information on the sun it is uh, sun is as you know we are that's a star we are living with and sun is also quite active in the sense that you know it is there are magnetic fields there and sun's activity have a periodicity of 11 years and during the 11 years the sun spots come and you know they actually create a lot of this uh, plasma ejections and they with our lot of electronic assets on the space we need to protect them and uh, we also do not know what is if you have more interstellar missions etc coming up then you need to know what is the particle density what is the charge density because electronics is the heart of the modules which are uh, the space modules which are out there and they get damaged by these particles and uh, uh, charged particles which are out there so we need to protect them and many of them are uh, being uh, it's controlled by the sun's activity so we have to monitor the sun at close quarters and science ways we need to understand as a sun how is sun performing what is what is there in the sun and uh, how is its uh, sun's energy which is created in the center is coming out and we know that the corona is very hot and uh, why the corona is as hot as the center of the sun is still an 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 unanswered question and the magnetic fields we can measure to some extent but how does the plasma come out and how the magnetic fields control or rather guide them beyond that is still uh, an unanswered question so one thing which we look forward to is predicting the solar burst cmes and protecting the uh, humanity as well as the assets out there so that way it is important word the the most important uh, module science instrument on uh, the uh, um, this mission that is the coronagraph that is that would mean that uh, coronagraph basically means that you actually look at the corona by blocking the disk so that's a permanent solar eclipse created inside the instrument so once you create the solar uh, total solar eclipse the disk light is blocked and you can actually see the corona 
and you can see the study the corona. So that is the uh, uh, it's a very complex instrument we have delivered, and uh, we look forward to getting the science scientific results from that particular instrument, and of course the whole mission. Right, right. So it, it's a very uh, complex science to create instruments that can last in space and conduct those experiments. Uh, after the sun, uh, ISRO also has a mission planned for Venus as well in the yes. near future. Right. So uh, I wanted to understand from you, uh, whenever we are planning these interstellar missions, interplanetary missions, what are the complex challenges that we face? Why it is so difficult to create, to develop these payloads and even undertake a mission like Chandrayaan? Yeah, so it is, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the uh, challenges rega re 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 regarding the rockets, where you need to lift the entire thing up to the space. So the uh, the more you travel, you need to have more fuel to push it, push it beyond it and also navigate it. So these are the challenges with respect to the mission. And out there, once you have uh, sent it up, you need to have power. So power, electronics, control, communication, all these are challenges with respect to mission. But with respect to scientific instruments, you need to make sure that the science instruments perform there without any failure. It's not like an instrument you made on the tabletop and you uh, try to test it. Something is not working, you can fix it. Again, you test it, it's not working, you can fix it. It's not possible. You have to have done everything possible on the ground and more than that, then you send it and make sure that it should work 100%. And if she, it shows something different, you should know why it is showing different. And also, the instrument goes through all this, you know, shakes when it, the rocket is launched and thermal cycles and right. adverse conditions. And all these conditions, the instrument should perform. So the testing and the planning and the, uh, even starting from the design is completely different for a space instrument compared to a ground instrument. So you have to plan properly, test it properly, and make sure that all uh, adverse conditions are simulated. If you uh, encounter multiple adverse conditions by multiple components, still it should perform. Right. So, so you, it is a testing, it takes a long time because you need to make sure that all these tests are conducted. You can't do simultaneously. You, you have to do one by one by one and then simultaneous. And then if there's any breakage, you have to plan again, design, redesign, put it, etc. So the the time required for a space module or space instrument to be completed, it takes long. So you have to plan ahead, you have to test all this, and then only you can learn. So it's complex. Infrastructure requirement is complex. Knowledge is complex. And time taken is more. And India scores a big point because in terms of that, our missions are very cost effective. Uh, despite all the time that we take, the amount of resources and, uh, and the money that is put into these projects compared to other nations is vastly less. Uh, yeah. Right. In, in case of Chandrayaan-3 as well, we have a lot of instruments on board. Uh, there are four uh, payloads on the lander, two on uh, rover once they successfully land on the moon. Uh, it, let's talk about Chandrayaan-3. So why is it so difficult? What is that part of moon which makes it difficult for a spacecraft to land? And what are the complex signs that we hope to uh, unravel once the mission uh, successfully lands? Because the, the mission is going to be there for 14 Earth days, which equals to one lunar day. Yeah, so there are many things which take we take for granted which are there on the Earth. One is the atmosphere. Second is the gravity. So when anything you push, put, put, throw up, it falls down, it feels the gravity. It also feels the air. So anything, the resistance is uh, given by the air and also the gravity pulls it down. So now we, we have so much used to the way we walk, the way we breathe is due to these two factors. Now, when you take yourself out of Earth and put anywhere, these two are not going to be the same. And you have to simulate such conditions and make sure that things work. And if you want to land something on that, you have to de-boost and it should slowly bring it down, right? That is okay. the way it is. Now, you, have, you are not going, you are not approaching the moon in a straight way. You are actually going on circles. So you have to go there, then kind of, of position and then you have to actually stabilize and then go down and now you cannot assume that you're going to land on a tabletop you're going to land on a, some very very half hazard and uh, non-uniform uh, surface so that's what i'm saying the conditions are so very different 
that you need to and uh, you if a couple of things go wrong you have to make sure that still it works so you have to make sure that the velocity is still moving it is moving this way it is moving this way so the movement should be like this and it has to land in such a way that it doesn't crash land and also when it lands it cannot tip, tip or tilt because the, the bottom is not flat and and it is it's heavy it's not it's a small thing so you do test and you do make sure that all these conditions are not and also the you are not going to tell them to okay now you see there is a rock out there can you move a little bit so that you can you, you can avoid this there's nothing guiding there right this is actually an automated thing so you need to make in or, or is a, is a, uh, in orbit or a, it's an autonomous uh, system where it has to make a decision whether to go down and there's an adverse thing is it possible assess the probability and then say that okay i think i can land go there and do it so it has to perform such complex thing uh, in an automated way 